Original Genesis guitarist Anthony Phillips talks about his replacement in the band, Steve Hackett. I'm John Bowden from RockHistoryMusic.com. They say a little competition in a rock band is a good thing. You know, that rivalry thing certainly made the Beatles a better band. Sometimes there's more friction when you're talking about, let's say, a guitarist and the guy who might have replaced him in the band. Anthony Phillips left Genesis in 1970 after their second album, Trespass. He was replaced by Steve Hackett, who was with them until 1977 at the end of the Wind and Weathering Tour. And you'd expect maybe a little friction between them. Not so in this case. I talked to Anthony Phillips via phone a couple of days ago, and I shared with him my chat with Steve Hackett just six months ago. Steve was touring and he was excited about his new album, and I mentioned to Steve Hackett that of all the Genesis members, he was more, let's say, fruitful when it came time to releasing albums, more prolific, to which Steve Hackett corrected me and said, if anyone's been prolific, it's Anthony Phillips. So having Anthony on the phone, I had to ask, What's the relationship like between you two? Well, I mean, it's, it's an interesting one because I didn't, I just used to meet Steve at the sort of, you know, the functions, the do's, the get-togethers, all the rest of it. We were never, um, it was always polite. He's quite shy. Um, but I, I only really got to know him uh, sort of ironically in the kind of wake of his, of, his, the, of his sort of catastrophic divorce where everything was kind of going wrong and... Um, he was with Joe, who's now his second wife, and I remember going around there, and things things were very tense. It was not a good time for him, and but actually um, having sort of we, we had a long, long, long chat about our time in the group and compared notes and all the things, which was, was quite a, <laughs> quite an extraordinary evening. Actually, we never really kind of looked back after that. To be honest, I mean, he has a couple of friends who I like very much, and so a group of us would always meet up. We wouldn't talk about music that much, but um, so I, I learned, I, you know, I've developed you know, a strong friendship with Steve as well as an innate respect. I mean, I must say that in the last few years, I mean, he's beaten me hand, hands down in terms of, of um, being prolific. Um, I mean, he really has. He's been incredibly prolific. I mean, I think, I think he's partly had to be, obviously, because that's his, you know, that's his... Um, his bread and butter, whereas my bread and butter is more from from uh, from television music. But um, no, I mean I haven't really been prolific the last few years. I mean I've obviously lots of lots of work on the re-releases and bonus CDs and stuff. But I haven't really been terribly prolific in the album department for a while. Whereas Steve is unbelievable how the way he turns things around. He's I mean I'm, I'm so proud of the guy because he's done so much to had to pull it really pull himself out of the fire. And my God, you know. Getting out on the road and doing all that, and writing new albums. I mean, he's um, he works incredibly hard. He works harder than I do now. I mean, I did my time, but I don't work as hard as he does. I, yeah, I suppose it's a bit of a mutual fan club. It sounds like. A few days ago, we just released a video on Linda Ronstadt not really liking any of her albums. In fact, kind of hating them on some levels. That wasn't really new information for a lot of people because she has spoken in the past about not liking a lot of her hits, especially her 70s hits. So having Anthony Phillips on the phone, a guy who's released a lot of music, I had to ask him if he could go back and really listen to his older stuff. No, I don't listen to my stuff at all because um, I tend to find I'm always dissatisfied with it. And I always think, uh, so when you have to listen to it, the rule of thumb is normally that it's all right the first time or two because she'd forgotten what it was that you were dissatisfied with. But a little way in, you start becoming increasingly dissatisfied and you don't want to listen to it anymore. I think anything involving vocals as well tends to make me feel more embarrassed. It's just like people don't like the sound of their own voice when they hear it on tape, do they? Mm -hmm. you know? um, I don't particularly like photographs myself either. So, you know, I, yeah, I do find it difficult. I get ultra critical. I prefer not to listen to it, really, most of it. Anthony Phillips has just released a deluxe edition of his 1983-84 album, Invisible Men. It was released in the US in 83, the following year in the UK. Whenever a prog artist releases something very pop, I'm always curious. I'm not one of those guys that hates it and I only stick to prog. I like music. I don't care what genre it is. If it's interesting, I like it. And I loved Invisible Men. In spite of the fact that it was the last thing I expected 
from Anthony Phillips. Genesis, I wasn't as surprised when they went pop. So I had to ask him how it happened. I have dug my heels in the times, uh, certainly about certain things, but generally speaking, early on, we pretty much had to toe the line because simply you couldn't get into a recording studio if you didn't do what the record company wanted. Mind you, with things like 1984, I did my own thing, and that was then, that was then sold on to a record company. So I've been a mixture of somebody climbing his furrow and somebody who's really just had to do, I mean, what, uh, Invisible Men, we were, you know, punk and disco had come along and any long form stuff was out the window. So we were all basically given our marching orders and told, you know, do, do uh, try and do pop songs. I mean, when I played on Andy Latimer's uh, The Single Factor, that's why it was called that, because everyone was demanding singles again, you know. It was a very strange business, because if you were 15 or 16 or 17, I'm sure it was fine, but for the rest of us, we were like trying to turn the clock back, really, and it didn't make a lot of sense, to be honest. But Invisible Men was, yes, I mean, it was, because um, the record company said, well, it's got to be an album of songs. I mean... I think if you think you're a decent musician, you should be able to try and turn your hand to, to anything. I'm sure Bart would have been brilliant at, in the modern age at anything he turned his hand to. But uh, I do remember finding it a little bit of a struggle because I'm not a naturally incredibly commercial animal, which is what they were wanting. That's part one of our conversation with the original guitarist for Genesis, Anthony Phillips. He'll also be featured in our top 25 Genesis songs of all time. Yes, some of the songs he played on ended up in our top 25. That's for our sister video channel, Rock History Book. This is Rock History Music. Rock History Music is basically about new information, new stories, new interviews on classic rock and pop performers. Rock History Books about top 10s and top 10s. But we'll have stories on both of our channels with Anthony Phillips. And man, he told me some stuff that I had never heard before. Make sure you comment on our videos, subscribe to our channel, and share our videos. I'm John Bowden from Rock History Music.